All right, depending on your time zone, good morning, good noon, good, very early morning, so this is time. Um, glad to have you. Um, so Lunas, is there anything that you want to say as we get kicked off this morning? Not really, actually. Okay. I'm just letting everyone in, uh, making sure that uh, we still have people coming into the waiting room and um, that we're doing a live feed to our Facebook page. So awesome. really excited about having everyone join. Awesome. Thank you. Well, some of you are already starting the, the new chat practice, which is hello from wherever you are, which is awesome. Brooklyn, New York, Cape Town, South Africa, Singapore, Seattle, Finland, the UK, Kenya, Amsterdam. This is the best part of all of us being trapped on Zoom is <laughs> that we get to be together. <laughs> um, so thank you. Thank you for putting that in and you can just kind of check out and welcome each other by seeing where we're all zooming in from. Uh, this morning I am in Seattle, Washington. I'm on a little like COVID safe travel tour um, to see my, my kids and old friends. So that's where I am this morning. A little bit dark out still here. All right, folks, I'm going to go ahead and start even as people are joining us. I'm Stacy, Stacy Haynes. Um, I've probably seen some of you before in this leadership dojo and I'm a senior teacher at Strozzi Institute. And then I also co-founded Generative Somatics that brings all this somatic work to, to social and climate justice movements. And um, today we are gonna talk about and practice about um, centered action, sustaining centered action over time or sustainability and centered action and what do they have to do with each other? So that's where we're gonna head. And you know, probably obviously a part of why we wanted to do this topic today is um, we are all under a diff different kinds but sustained pressure. Um, I know we've been in some level of COVID, <clears throat> uh, you know, shelter in place since March. I know that shifted depending on the country that you're in. And sadly, as you all know, we are on another uprise in that. And then those of us who are in the US, um, we've been dealing with lots of fires and hurricanes and other climate right induced natural disasters. And we're on our seven day countdown to our national elections. Um, so sustainability and centered action <laughs> seem like the theme of the year and maybe the next three years. Um, we will see how we're all doing. Um, so that's where we're going. Um, another of the reasons we wanted to bring this in is really, you know, I think all of us, any, any of us who are interested in a path of practice, um, really sign up for sustainability over time. And that can be really focused on our relationships. What is it to sustain and build quality relationship over decades? Um, what is it to do that as parents, right? How do we sustain good quality relationship or parenting over time? And then all of us in looking really at our work in the world, right? How are we having, you know, how are we doing our work in the world in a sustained way over time, really guided by vision and values? So anyway, these are, these are all themes that sustainability and centered action are related to. So given that, um, let's actually just start. We're gonna do a few different practices through today, but let's start with a little bit different kind of centering. You can stay seated or you can join me standing, whatever works for you. Just make sure my volume is up. There we go. All right. So I'm just gonna add a little bit to centering this morning for those of you who are familiar with it. And centering is one of the ways we can really just come back to ourselves, right? We can come back to present time because we're locating ourselves inside of sensation, yeah, which are happening in current time. And then fundamentally inside of this, this is such a part of sustainability and such a part of centered action. We're connecting to ourselves, we're listening to ourselves, and then we're helping to organize ourselves around purpose, 
Yeah. So getting present, open, connected, and on purpose. So let's get just present in sensation first. So let your attention come from your thinking self or your zoom self into your sensing and feeling. If you want to during this part, if you want to close your eyes, it's fine. But start to just soften your eyes back into their sockets. Start to soften your jaws so your, your teeth don't touch. And start to soften and deepen your breath. All of these are things that allow us to start to come deeper into our own bodies and deeper into sensation. And then see if you can take a breath or two all the way down your spine and follow that breath into your body. And then start to notice your neck, your upper back, your low back, your chest, right through feeling, through feeling and sensing. And then whether you're seated or standing, start to notice your weight or your weightedness into gravity. So because I'm standing, I'm going to feel the weight in my hips first, and I'm going to feel the weight down into my lower body and onto my feet. Yeah, settling into ourselves, getting present through noticing and identifying with sensation. Noticing for yourself where you're cooler and where you're warmer right now. And then noticing for yourself where you might feel any tension or any softness and relaxation inside of you right now. Just noticing that. Breathing, letting the breath deepen. And then lastly, noticing where you feel any movement. It might, might be that you feel your breath. It might be that you notice gurgling, right, in your intestines or belly. You might feel pulsing someplace or your heartbeat. And just come into that language of the senses. All right, good. Let's continue to practice from there. But now let's bring our attention to center. And if it helps, you can place a hand just below your belly button. And then let your hand feel your belly and let your belly feel your hand. Bring your breath and bring yourself just behind your hand. Good. And when you're ready, you can let your hands go. And we're going to play around with length for a minute. I'm going to invite you to put one hand up and one hand down and extend through both of those hands and then extend into length with your whole body, like top of your head, bottom of your feet, making more space between your vertebra. Just stretch into length. And then let your hands relax, but stay in that full length. And then we're going to go other hand up, other hand down, extending down and extending up, both through your arms, but through your whole body extending. Your feet are extending into the floor, your hips are extending toward the floor, and your head stretching and then relaxing into length. And take a good breath, relaxing and lengthening, settling and lengthening. Good balance, top to bottom. And then inside of that centering in dignity. And just find a place where you feel that in yourself, your dignity or the dignity of all life. All right, keeping all that length, we're going to stretch sideways into width. Again, widening your hips, widening your feet, this extending through your arms, 
width, width, and then relaxing the arms, keeping that width, a centered, extended width. Again, stretching out, widening, widening. Let your breath and chest widen. And then keep that width and relax. That's good, good. So widening, centering and width, balancing left to right and staying expanded and yet connected to yourself. Yeah, connected to others, connected to ourselves. Good. <clears throat> and then let's do depth. One hand front, one hand back. So I'll look like this from the side. Extending forward and really extending, feeling back. Opening the back, opening the front side. Big depth. And then relaxing and feeling that depth all the way back, all the way forward opening up your depth more. Switching sides, switching arms. Again, big extension back, opening the palms of the hands, extending, stretching, opening. And then let that go, relaxing, but let that awakeness and depth stay with you. Open your backside feeling the space behind you. You can feel back into ancestors or just evolutionary wisdom. We have a very big space at our backs. Allowing that depth to be in your own physical body so there's more space, more space for you, more space for your organs, for breath. And then that extension forward where we're really making ourselves available to the future, to the world. You know, really bringing our our vision. Yeah. All right, length with depth, feel the whole of you. Yeah. So feeling the whole of you, feeling the organism, right, that you are, that we all are. And then we want to center, as always, either in your declaration, if you have one, or really centering in who and what matters to you, really our values or our, our guiding principles. So just let yourself feel who and what matters to you. What do you long for, for yourself or for the world? And let yourself center inside of that. Then really let that inform your nervous system, start to become muscle memory because we wanna be able to be and act from that. Yeah, this is one of the reasons we center as we go, all right, let me get present, let me get connected to my purpose, my values, and let that permeate me. So it starts to become a baseline uh, knowing or a baseline habit. All right, awesome. Let's come back together and sit. And just place in the chat, how's your mood this morning as we start practicing? Awesome, just reading all of those. We have a very good range. It's all welcome. All right. All right. So I want to start with talking about what is sustaining or what is sustainability, right? We're not talking about environmental sustainability, but us. How do we sustain? And how do we sustain under extended pressure? 
And I don't know about you all, but I think I've really been feeling this last year, year and a half. I'm like, maybe life is just sustained pressure. <laughs> maybe that's really part of just what human life is, <laughs> is sustained pressure. And, you know, not in a bad way, but it seems like <clears throat> um, that's part of it for sure. Um, so I want to ask you all, if you think about sustaining, right, as a person, as a parent, as a friend, as a leader, if you think about sustaining or sustainability, right, being in our values and action over time, what is, um, I don't know, what, what's an a word, a, another word that you associate with sustainability or sustaining? If you don't have one, don't worry about it. If you have one, just drop it in the chat. Balance, growth, enduring, continuation, resilience, fluidity, emergent, self-care. Well, these are all good. We should save all these. <laughs> Put these on my wall. That's great. Loving, aliveness, mutuality, openness, generative, perseverance. Awesome. Okay. Those are great. Those are great. Okay. So... <clears throat> As we talk about sustaining or sustainability, also use the word that resonates best for you, okay? So when I was kind of thinking about sustaining, like what's the practice of sustaining? How would we do that since somatics is so interested in practice and how we do something? I really kind of honed in on three aspects of understanding sustainability or how we sustain. One is the capacity to be self-responsive. And really, that is not a small thing. Um, we're actually going to do a practice around it. But the capacity to be self-responsive, which means we can be deeply connected to ourselves and then responsive, that sometimes being self-responsive is we need to turn up our courage and enter in and move toward what's important to us or take a risk or leverage our courage. Sometimes that's being self-responsive, even though it might be uncomfortable. Other times being self-responsive is pausing and going, what this, this self needs given what I care about is I need to pause or I need to make space or I need to have boundaries or I need to rest or I need to increase my pleasure, right? So this capacity to be connected enough to ourselves, which also means knowing our 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 reactivity or our conditioned tendencies enough, but being connected enough to ourselves to be self-responsive, right? If we override ourselves for a long enough period of time, we will burn out. I just have seen it over and over again. I have experienced it. If we override ourselves for a long period of time, we burn out and that looks different ways for different ones of us. If we also, maybe I can call it over self-soothe or really look for comfort over and over again. I wanna be comfortable, I wanna be comfortable. We really rob courage from ourselves, yeah? So what I wanna take apart right now is being self-responsive and being comfortable aren't always the same thing, right? Being self-responsive and being comfortable are not always the same thing. Um, so, okay, sustaining. So number one is how do we be self-responsive? Okay, that's the first thing when I was kind of like, how do we look at sustainability? The second thing um, is how do we be responsive to others and our environment or our conditions? Yeah. So we are always living amidst others whether that's our family, our community, our loved ones, and we're living amidst the world, right? We're part of the world. Um, I, I, I think in some ways, it, this year just reveals that to us over and over and over again. We are part of a we. So sustainability is also paying attention to the we. Yeah? <clears throat> it's like, what is it that my family or community might need right now? What is it that the world is calling for right now or even calling for from me right now? So sustainability isn't only self-focused. Sustainability is going, how, how are we doing? What's happening out here? And what might be being called for 
um, that I can be a part of or that I can con contribute to. And then number three, which we're also gonna do some practice on today are really what are my vision, what visions and values, All right? This is such a big question. And I feel like one of our, one aspect of, our, of sustaining ourselves right now, one aspect of being self-responsive is that we're really digging in and going, what are my values? And how do I wanna live those, right? In uncertain times. Um, and what's my vision, you know, both for my, myself, but really for my community in the world, right? As a kind of a lining point over and over again. So sustainability, how do I be self-responsive? How do I be responsive to my environment, conditions, and others? And what are my visions and values, right? Sustaining is a very dynamic process, but these are three components of learning how to do that or knowing how to do that. Okay, all right, so I wanna go into a practice together of being self-responsive, right? Because this is such a key piece of sustaining over time. And the funny thing about being self-responsive is it might not line up with our condition tendencies or habits. Uh, so, you know, one of my condition tendencies or habits is if there is external need, I leverage my courage and I go toward trying to meet it, yeah? So that second piece of being responsive to the world or the external, I'm very wired to do that. Now that is not always bad, sometimes that's awesome. But when it comes to self-responsiveness or sustainability, that is the condition tendency I know I have to watch. And a place that's more uncomfortable but is self-responsive are the moments when I go, there's so much external need. Our world and many communities seem to be in meltdown. And what is self-responsive is I need quiet and I need to take pause and I need to increase what's pleasurable to me, right? That can seem in contradiction, both to my condition tendency, but even in contradiction to what's needed for the world. And that's been required a lot of me this year because of other things happening in my immediate life, like the need to pause, renew, find pleasure, connect, to then be ready to go external again, um, has felt very contradictory um, to what's happening in the world. So that's a little bit about me. You'll, you'll let me know what yours is. But let's do a practice around being self-responsive. And what I'm gonna ask you all to do is tune inside, go inside and find for you, it might be called different things inside of you, but find that core where you can really listen to yourself. It might be a sense of really coming home to yourself. It'll be somewhere for sure below your neck. For you, it might be in your heart. It might be all the way down in your center and belly. Um, for me, it's all the way down the core of my spine, kind of on the inside, the anterior side of my spine. But for you, find that deep place of being connected to you, of being connected to your own knowing or wisdom. And let yourself <clears throat> come into that space. If there's any place you need to relax to get there more, go ahead and relax. It might be your jaw. It might be that you need to just relax your heart and chest a little bit more so you can be really connected to your core, to your center. It might be for you that this is a spiritual home. You can call in spirit a little bit more if that's what you need or that nature or a sense of love and connection help you get there. Whatever it is, I just wanna give space for you to arrive.
And I'm just going to ask you um, two questions and just notice what this core in you says. Yeah, really listening to this core. <clears throat> what is it that in this time, and that might just be today or this week, but what is it that you're needing? And just let your core respond to that. And if you're like, I don't know, it's fine. But what is it that you're needing? Listening for that. And then the second question, just listening to your core, being in your core. How can you be more self-responsive? And just for you, how can you be more self-responsive? And just notice what that, what that core says to you. <clears throat> when you're ready, if you want to come out and jot either of those answers down, feel free to. The questions were, what do you need? And how can you be more self-responsive? Great, and some of you are dropping them in the, in the chat. What you're saying makes so much sense. <laughs> Need for a deep exhale, need for space, partnership, time in nature, nature and action, being still, running and playing outdoors. Yeah. One of the ones that came for me when I said the second question of how do I be self-responsive? It was connect into this place more often. Connect into this place four times a day. Right? So keeping that <clears throat> that space of checking in rather than doing it once a week or once a month, right? So that was one that came for me. Yeah. <clears throat> all right. <clears throat> Some of the things that you all are putting down are things that you can put in your day or things that you can put in your week. And I want to remind us, it's not just doing the activity, let's say a number of you, <laughs> These are good things that you're putting in there. Since a number of you put nature, <clears throat> it isn't just like, okay, let me hurry up, get into nature and then get back, but let yourself actually be in nature when you're there. Feel yourself, feel nature, right? Let ourselves open and absorb it. It's allowing the somatic experience of the things that you're putting down, yeah? All right, I love it. Art, friendship, Paolo Fiere. Um, you're saying beautiful things here. Okay, so I wanna practice. <clears throat> I wanna practice from that self-connected place. <clears throat> We're gonna take a moment, and I'm gonna back up so you can also see my body here for a moment. We're gonna stay seated. But in a moment, we're gonna practice <clears throat> saying yes, and entering or moving toward from that self-responsive place. And we're gonna practice making space, saying no and making space, right? So often being self-responsive either asks us to engage in something, move towards something, nature, hug, action, right? More time with loved ones. Or what that self-responsiveness is asking us to do is actually make more space, quiet, yeah, so I wanna, I wanna just have us practice that from that core space, a yes and a moving toward or what we call entering or a no and a making, making space and backing up a little bit, okay? So on the yes, I'll guide us through this, but on the yes, 
Our hands are going to be out to the side, but with our hands and palms open. I'm going to stand to show you. So I'll be seated. We want to open your palms, which kind of opens your chest and heart. That's going to be our yes. And we'll do a yes and we'll move toward, literally moving our body forward. When we come to the no and boundaries, it's just going to be a gentle making a boundary this way. Okay. A gentle no, I need to make space. Okay. So <clears throat> let's all take a minute and get reconnected to that core or that place where we're connected to ourselves deeply that resource in us. Relaxing eyes, relaxing jaws. Let your breath help you be there, get there. Connecting to that home that way that we're with ourselves. And let's first practice from that core. Like if we're in that core and it says, I need, I need space, I need quiet, I need more connection with myself. Let's try that on first. So we're with our core and we're just gonna gently make a boundary. Right, there's a boundary that says, <clears throat> I need space, I need renewal, I need some room. Yeah, so this is a no, making a boundary, and then just move back a little bit. So we're making some space between us and the world or us and others. Just feel that, a gentle no and boundary and making space while we connect with ourselves. Just feel what that's like for you. How often you allow that for yourself or not. Good, and letting that go, just coming back to kind of neutral or center, being connected to yourself. feeling how, how you be with you, right? So you can listen deeply enough to be self-responsive. And then next, let's try the shape of yes. So it's opening the hands, thumbs are up. We're opening our chest. So that could be a moving toward action. It could be a moving toward nature, but it's yes. And then let yourself enter a little bit. You're still over your center, you're in a yes, but you're gonna let yourself move toward or enter. And stay connected to yourself, but just feel more of the shape of yes and moving toward. Good, and then just come back to center or neutral. We're gonna try them each one more time. And again, just feeling yourself. It's like, which of these are you good at? Which of these you not allow yourself too much? <clears throat> and just practicing, getting a little repetition in. So being connected to your core, and just practice making a boundary, making space. So in a way that's responsive to you, that can be responsive to others, that's connected with your values, you're gonna say no and make space. If it feels right for you, you can even be like, I need to back up a little bit from all this just to make more space. Good, letting that go. <clears throat> Listening to yourself, being connected to yourself. And then let's shift again to the yes, I'm gonna enter, I'm gonna engage, I'm gonna act, I'm gonna connect. Yeah, opening to the shape of yes. 
And again, if it works for you, entering or even moving forward a little bit. But still staying connected to your core. We don't have to pop outside of ourselves to say yes, just staying connected to our core. Feeling that shape. Feel your back even as you're moving forward. Good and letting that go. All right, good. Since it seems like <clears throat> many of you have paper or are jotting things down, I'm gonna ask you to just jot down even just three words of <clears throat> Like, what is it or where is it that I need to make space or just have a self-responsive boundary? Yeah, where is it or with whom do I need to make space or have a more self-responsive boundary? And then the second one is um, where is it that I want to say yes or enter? Yeah, where is it that I want to say yes or enter, right? From a centered, self-responsive way, <clears throat> but act or enter and also just write down at least three, at least three things for you. The first one again is where is it or with whom I need to place a boundary or make more space. And then second one <clears throat> is where do you wanna say yes? Again, from a self-responsive place. As you're writing the person that said no Nathan today, we always switch off his leading leadership dojo and you can see Nathan every day in the coaching and context course. <laughs> That's where he is every session. <laughs> All right, good. So self-responsive, right? We stay connected in here. From here, we make space, right? One responsive is, is to make space and the other is to enter to, to kind of leverage our courage to engage and act. Yeah, <clears throat> okay. All right. <clears throat> I love this one. Uh, I need to make space with myself. Um, or I need to, where is it? I need to say no to my own checklist. That is so true. That is so true for so many people. It's like we invent a checklist and then we become beholden to it in a way where we're not self-responsive anymore. You know, recycle the checklist, burn the checklist, do whatever you need to do with the checklist, <laughs> or start a new one every day where first you're self responsive and then you create your checklist. All right. Um, awesome. Okay, just looking at time here. <clears throat> so, again, <clears throat> um, sustainability, we're self responsive. We're responsive and connected to what's happening outside of us, our families, our communities, the world. And we're connected to our values and our vision, right? Those pieces let us go, okay, how do I sustain and be in action over time, okay? <clears throat> so I want us to do, oh, do I have time to do two more practices? I think I do. Um, <clears throat> in staying kind of tied in with this piece about self-responsive and especially self-responsive under highly times of sustained stress, which we're all living in, <clears throat> is I wanna do a little piece about pleasure. Um, <clears throat> pleasure can be both overrated and underrated. <laughs> I don't know everyone well enough to go, oh, is it overrated or underrated for you? But it feels like such an important piece when we're looking at resilience and when we're, when we're looking at sustainability over time is to really allow for and include pleasure. So <clears throat> how I'll think about pleasure is what, what we're looking at somatically is not pleasure as an escape, 
right? So it's not pleasure as I need to get away from <clears throat> the pain of the world, or I need to get away from a, a contradiction that I'm struggling with that I just need to keep struggling with because in struggling with this contradiction, I will gain wisdom and right action. Like those things are a part of life and we want to keep those as a part of life. But we're talking about pleasure like um, um, <clears throat> the small joys. That's how I think about it, the small joys, the small pleasures, maybe something you read or you're going to read today or the beauty of a plant that you see or the joy of just connecting with someone or being in practice together this morning, right? What are the pleasures that nourish us somatically? And, you know, I don't want to discount big joys. There are big joys too. And if you're having those fully present somatically, go for it. <laughs> Our world can use more of that right now. But we're looking at embodied pleasure, right? Pleasure that nourishes us, pleasure that lets us become more awake, not more checked out, okay? <clears throat> So I'm gonna ask you again in your reflections and you can add this to the chat, but what are two things that bring you pleasure? That somatic felt sense of pleasure. And then since you all are <clears throat> in practice, where do you feel that pleasure in your soma? Where do you feel it in your body? Thank you for everybody that's putting this in chat. It's beautiful. There's a lot of music, plants, chipmunks, <laughs> uh <-huh. clears throat> dancing, a bird, connection, relationship, hummingbirds swimming, meditation, zazen practice, sun on your face, beautiful. Okay, where do you feel pleasure in your body? Could be chest, heart, back, could be your hips, could be all the way down in your soles of your feet. Where do you feel pleasure in your soma, in your body? Great, I really don't know is fine. That's a great answer too. Shoulders and back, heart. Great, okay. <clears throat> I'm gonna ask us all, <clears throat> again, in this self-responsive space, I'm gonna ask us to get into that self-responsive space and then we're gonna add pleasure to it, okay? So <clears throat> just take a moment again, it's almost like getting to, into just the beginning state of meditation. <clears throat> Let your attention come into your core again. Let your attention <clears throat> be with your sensations, but particularly inside of the place where you come home to yourself. Relaxing, softening your eyes. Relaxing, softening your jaw. And if you can, let your shoulder blades rest just a little bit more down your back. Let your breath come all the way down your spine. If you can, let your feet be on the floor and let your hips settle into your seat, into your chair, another 4%. Just waiting, let yourself be weighted or connect with gravity. And coming into that quality of connection with yourself. I want you to evoke or remember a, a recent pleasure. Maybe it was that hummingbird or the plant or that music. Call, call in, recall. <clears throat> what that was for you and recall it in a way that's 
that's vivid for you. You're hearing it, you're seeing it, you're smelling it, you're touching it, whatever is most relevant. And then let yourself <clears throat> open to the pleasure of it. And maybe that means that your, your chest or your heart just softens a little bit. Or you allow it to enliven your belly a little bit more. Again, whatever it is for you, maybe you open your back a little bit more. But allow the pleasure in, allow yourself contact with the pleasure. Let your breath help you open to it or help you let it in more. I'm just gonna go about 20 seconds more. Let yourself be with that pleasure. Let that pleasure nourish you. Notice where you feel that in your body and notice how it changes you to be with pleasure and to let pleasure in more deeply. And then at the end of your next exhale, just let yourself come out. <laughs> just note that for yourself, <clears throat> what um, lingering in pleasure, you know, what Mary Oliver calls lingering in happiness. I love that poem, but lingering in pleasure how it nourishes you or how it feeds you. Just note that for yourself. And then if you wanna put your mood or anything in the chat, you can go ahead and do that. <clears throat> this weekend, I got to go on a beautiful <clears throat> hike um, outside of Seattle, but that Pacific Northwest, you know, the starting of the Northern Rainforest. <clears throat> and it had just snowed. And so there's all this incredible green moss because it's so moist up here, you know, coming from Northern California where it's just like fires and smoke and dryness. It's amazing to just be around the wet, <clears throat> but there's this piece of moss that was so vibrantly green with snow on it. And I don't know what it was about that combination, but that's what I was just lingering on is the moss with the snow. Um, <clears throat> that brought me pleasure. All right. <laughs> I love moss. Thank you. <laughs> Slower, more relaxed, supported, joy, soft. Oh, that's beautiful. The piece about the flower, ocean. Yeah. <clears throat> I know you all are getting this because we're kind of repeating this process on purpose today. But that when we connect and feel ourselves, <clears throat> and then right, listen to what self-responsive, this yes or this no, or linger in pleasure. <clears throat> All of these things are, they're doing a couple of things. One is we're practicing being deeply connected to ourselves over and over again, okay? One of the things that stress does, one of the things that fear does, one of the things that <clears throat> our world being so chaotic does is it pops our attention outside of ourselves. That's a normal biological response to stress and pressure. It's just like the deer whose ears go ping, right? And go, what's going on outside of us? And I'm assessing for danger. Our nervous systems and our somas do the exact same thing. But when we're getting over and over and over again, <clears throat> the stressors that we're facing and that we're living in our worlds, we can get caught on this right ears up, paying attention outside of ourselves. And our somas, our psychobiologies can get trapped there. So what we're doing today in this practice is over and over again going, let me come back in. 
Let me connect back in. And from here, remember that there's choices. There's choices of no and making space. There's self-responsive choices of yes, but I'm gonna stay connected to myself as I move out, right? And then there's this capacity to remember joy or pleasure and evoke it and let ourselves linger in it. All of those things start to calm our nervous systems. All of those things bring us back into contact with ourselves and our own somas. But all the things that you all have been putting in the chat are things that are getting us reconnected to ourselves into a place where we can be self-responsive, where we can actually take right action in staying connected to ourselves instead of taking action that's coming from a state of being hyper alert. Does that make sense? <clears throat> and so many things are throwing us into hyper alert because there are multiple threats we're facing right now, right? <clears throat> but part of why we practice is that we can go, I'm not gonna be in denial about the threats. Uh, we are having more and more climate induced natural disasters, right? We should get our shit together more and more quickly about climate, that's real. I don't wanna be in denial about that. We have a very huge election coming up and there might be political violence in multiple places. That's a real thing. I'm not gonna be in denial about it, right? But we can be connected to ourselves and not moving out of an automaticity of hyper alert, but rather moving from a place of practice, connected to values and vision, self-responsive and responsive to our environment. It is not a small thing. Like this is a lot to ask for of us as humans, but also it's possible, right? That's why we're cultivating ourselves or one of the reasons, yeah? So <clears throat> it's this both and, and it's being alive and responsive internally and alive and responsive externally, yeah? This is why I go, it is, it's not a small thing to be a person, <laughs> right? A lot is asked for of us, <laughs> yeah? <clears throat> but that's good, that's why we're here. All right, I wanna do one more thing and also one more practice. And I'm trying to pay attention to our chat at the same time. Um, yes, exactly. Um, things about being an activist, right? Out, 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 and we have to come back in, 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 right? If we think about right action, it's right action of like what's strategic, what can be impactful, what can serve life and that we're actually doing it from a place that we're not on panic or hyper alert or actually so disconnected from ourselves that it's costing us so much, yeah. Um, all right, here's the thing I wanna do. Um, one more self-reflection and then we're gonna take that into centered action and that's how we'll close today. Um, <clears throat> I would like you to be with and then write um, or draw or put in the chat, whatever is best for you, <clears throat> um, to just name for yourself three or four of your core values. Like your rudders, what you wanna to wanna to align yourself, your actions and your life up to over and over again. Feeling yourself, it doesn't just come from your head, right? It comes from a deep knowing in us. What are your core values? Three or four of your core values. Good, and if you want to, as some of you are choosing to, you can put them in chat. But just like we've been doing today, where we find our core values is that place where we reconnect deeply to our own core. As I was doing that this morning in, in preparation for our call, I could really feel very deeply in my belly and inside of my heart. One of my core values is to feed life. Like what feeds life? What is life affirming? Um, equity is a very deep core value for me. 
It's like all like oppression, inequity, concentration of wealth with a few, none of that is life affirming, right? So really I come back to equity, right? Interdependence over and over again. So where, you, where do you feel those inside of you? Where do you know those? Where do you cultivate those inside of you? Because it's really from those core values, of course, related to what's happening in our world that we come up with centered action, right? And sustained, and sustained centered action. Our values, where those values show up in our lived world, right? And then that place that we take sustained action from. Uh, so I'm gonna invite us to row as our last practice, but it's really gonna be connecting to our core, connecting to our values, and then using rowing as a place to be in action and change, okay? I'm gonna stand. If you wanna stay seated and do this, you can. And uh, <clears throat> for those of you who have not done rowing before, I'm just gonna show it and you can play along with me if you'd like. But the first and most important thing is from center, we're moving our weight forward and then we're moving our weight back. Forward and back. Forward and back. Okay, that's the first movement. At some place I'll say change. And what that means is we're gonna switch our legs. So if I say and change, the next time we come forward, we switch our legs and then keep going forward and back from center. And I might say again, and change. And the next one, we switch legs and then keep rowing. All right, that's the base of the practice. And then what our arms are doing is imagining that we're grabbing an oar together. So like we're in one big boat. <laughs> we grab the oar and then we bring it back to our centers. From center, back to center. From center, back to center. Okay, good. We got the basics and I have a very squeaky floor. I don't know if you all can hear that. But the first thing that I want to do is I want to have us connect to that core like we have been. So first thing is let yourself drop inside. Again, just below the neck, wherever you found that place of coming more home to yourself, of connecting with that core from which you can know what your values are, from which you can be self-responsive. And even as we're all looking at the screen, be sure to feel your back. So you have your core, you have your back. And then really bring that feeling sense of your values, get connected to that, the feeling sense of your values. You can say the word to yourself too, to help you center there, but get it connected to a feeling sense as well. So connected to yourself, connected to that core value, we're going to grab the oars and we're going to row. Staying connected to yourself and guided by your values, we're in action. Connected to your core, guided by your values. We're in action, centered action, right action. And because the world seems to be amazingly dynamic, I'm going to add change in a minute. And change. Back leg comes forward and we keep rowing. connected to your core, guided by values, 
and change. And change. Okay, and change every time. Every time your arms come forward, your leg comes forward. Relax in the change. Stay connected to your core in the change. And keep bringing your values forward, guiding our action. Good, and let's pause. All right, that was a lot of good action this morning. Take a minute, feel yourself. All right, and you can sit it back down. We're just at time here. I think Salunas has one announcement and I just want to thank you all for practicing together. I want to thank you all for being in like the, the cultivation and also the complexity of being self-responsive, guided by our values and engaged in the world. <clears throat> um, so thank you. It's really lovely to practice together. And so Lunas, can I hand it to you? Sure. Thanks, Stacey. That was really nourishing uh, this morning. I just want to extend an invitation to everyone here. To, if you want to practice more with us, we have Embodied Leadership Core Open for Enrollment. I am putting the link to that course that will be led by Nathan Shara. Uh, and yeah, please join us. We'll get to what that um, resource action or what those commitments and declarations are and what's, what wants to be. I'm really excited about this. Thanks so much, Stacey. Good to see you all. Thank you. Thank you. Take care. Thank you. <laughs>